Today, we are going to try to quantify the key contributors, key parameters that influence you feeling connected. Hi, I'm Dennis, product engineer at VRS. I'm Frank, senior systems engineer at VRS. As a sim racing hardware manufacturer, we are always looking for ways to make your experience more immersive, to make you feel more connected to your car. You might have heard a few kind words about the performance of our wheelbases in this department. On the one hand, you want to feel most connected to the front tires. That means you want to sense the very edge of sliding out, the very edge of losing traction, because the closer you can get to this, the faster you will be able to drive. We call this low frequency content. On the other hand, modern simulators create effects like road texture, curbs, ABS. We will call these high frequency contents. They are there to give you a more immersive experience. And a third aspect that we will cover today is slow rate. And in a way we can, you, we can describe this as how fast the wheelbase can react, how much punch it can give you. Let me start with introducing you to the slow rate. Hey, Dennis from the future here. At the end of the video, we're going to have a little surprise for you. Now, back to the video. To measure the slow rate, we're going to use this part of the setup. Here you can see DFP15 with an open back, and it's shaft locked, so there is no movement. On the back of the motor, we measure the motor current with this current clamp, and we visualize it on the oscilloscope. We use motor current as an equivalent to the produced torque, because it is electrically proportional. Now, the slew rate, it is the rate of change of any given signal, by definition. In our case, we are interested in the rate of change of the torque that motor can produce. But in the community, there is quite a bit of controversy around this term, because different manufacturers specify different values without saying how did they measure. And first thing we want to demonstrate to you is how you can get a whole range of different values depending on your measurement method. So let's start with exciting the DFP15, letting it produce some movement, and capturing it on the scope. We just let motor run for a while and captured the current waveform for you. Now you should see it bigger on the screen. What you see there is the motor first trying to push 100% of torque in one direction, then changing direction and pushing 100% of torque there, and then returning to standing still. We are interested in this middle section when we change from one direction into the other, from minus 100% to 100%. If the slew rate would be a constant value, you would see flat line there in this transition. But this is not the case. You can see how much curved it is. So the rate of change at any given point would be different. Now, let us zoom into one of the sections and show you how we can acquire dramatically different values for the slew rate, depending on how we measure. What we just did is we zoomed in to the lower section of the graph, where the wheelbase transitions from minus 100 to 100% of the torque. And we overlaid the trace in white on the screen, which indicates the rate of change of the signal. In our case, this is the slew rate that we're looking for. You can see that the slew rate is the highest at the start of the transition, and then it's going down. So if we measure the peak slew rate value that the DFP15 can produce, you can see value on the, on the screen. It is 12 kiloamps per second, which is equivalent to 14 newton meter per millisecond. If you know the products that are available currently on the market, should we choose to specify DFP15 at 14 newton meters per millisecond, we would be the king of the hill. But do we think it's fair cherry picking the very short instance where we can actually have this much slew rate? Well, we don't think so. But then, which value is fair? Should we pick from 0 to 100, from minus 100 to 100, entire range, or maybe just in the middle? Unfortunately, there is no industry standard on how to do it. And so we decided to set our own standard. We decided to measure the actual slew rate that you receive when driving with DFP15. Because we control the motor, we are measuring its current 10,000 times a second. So we can easily calculate rate of change and calculate the slew rate while you're driving. To do that, we asked Paschalis, our sim racing coach, to drive on the Nürburgring for us and record the telemetry. We will now play back his driving on the wheelbase and measure the slew rate while he was driving. 
Now we have telemetry from Paschalis running. Let's stop it and discuss what we see on the screen. What you see on the bottom, in purple, is the force feedback set point coming from the game. And the value in yellow above is the slew rate that we've measured on the wheelbase during this transition. They are shifted by one cycle, so when the game has bigger transition, you get bigger slew rate in the next cycle displayed on the screen. Now, we will turn on persistence and measure over longer time which values of slew rate are reasonable to expect when driving with DFP15. Now we had the race running for a while and capturing the slew rate values on the screen. You can see this yellow mesh in the background. It is slew rate values from before. And the more vivid yellow value is the momentary value in, in a given moment right now. The wheelbase is a little bit loud, not excluding that Pash is going through carousel or something. And you can imagine the more high frequency bumps you get, the higher slew rate value is going to be in a given moment. And something like right now, where it's just a flat road, you can see the values are quite low. So to specify the maximum slew rate for the DFP15, we will now enable the cursor to capture the peak value that Pash got during the race. It should now appear on your screen. And if we read the value from the cursor, it reads 8 kiloamps per second, which is 9.3 newton meters per millisecond. We are going to specify this value for the wheelbase and let Pash keep driving and recording the values until the end of the video, and then we revisit it again. So now that Dennis has shown you how we measure slew rate, let's go over to the second setup that we have prepared here. It's this one here. What we are going to demonstrate here is how we measure frequency response. I have been talking about low frequency content and high frequency content. So this is what this is about. And what does frequency response mean in our case? Response to what? Like that simple. The, the simulator is creating an input signal and we are producing an output in terms of torque or force feedback. So how do we measure force feedback in this case? The idea that we had here is that we want to measure force feedback at the place where your hands are. This is a gyroscope, which is measuring acceleration of rotation. Doesn't sound to be related, but if you think about it, it is torque, motor torque, that is accelerating this, uh, this entire assembly, which is accelerating the, the shaft and the wheel. That means acceleration is proportional to torque. And we now have prepared a test code, which is producing a so-called chirp. It is exciting the wheelbase and wheel in a sinusoidal way, it's shaking, and it's increasing the frequency of which it's doing that. And simultaneously, we are recording the response that we get here. And this sounds all a bit abstract, not known to maybe quite a few people who are not into motor control design and such things. So I'm trying to, to build the bridge to something which, my, which, uh, which many of you might know, and that is speakers. Many of you have heard about frequency response of speakers, and you know that a good speaker should have a, a mostly flat or ideally flat response up to, to 20 kilohertz, like beyond the audible range, so that it's not attenuating anything. And it should be at a high level, of course. So we have woofers like this, creating low frequency response. And this is in our case, similar to low frequency response to get connected to the wheel, to the front tire. And then we have tweeters, which are creating high frequency content. So this, would, this is then comparable to effect generation, like curbs. If you look at this technically, it is the speaker manufacturers also playing a, a chirp with their amplifier, letting the speaker play from low frequency tones to high frequency tones. And then they place a, a, a receiving accurate microphone in front of their speaker and they measure what this is receiving. And what a microphone receives is a so-called sound pressure level. You want to keep this constant. No, it means the acceleration of the air that is exciting the receiving microphone. So it is again acceleration, what they want to keep constant. And ultimately it is actually acceleration of the speaker cone that they want to keep constant. So it's the same thing, basically. <laughs> they feed in a sinusoidal input signal and they measure acceleration. And we do the same. And we also work on achieving the most flat response that we can get up to the highest frequency that we can get. And I now want you to look at the screen. Uh, you see the VRS 
configuration tool here and I will be playing with the slew rate because slew rate is closely related to a frequency response in the way that a high slew rate means that it's acting fast. You can imagine like fast moving cone in a speaker and that means that it is creating a high bandwidth like it can play back very high frequencies and I will dial down the, the, the slew rate in steps and visualize to you that this is then reducing the ability for the wheelbase to create these high frequency effects. Now I will be starting the test tool which is creating the input signal of a rising frequency and I want you to listen about the tone that it's creating and it's slowly rising and so this makes it also transparent while we draw the bridge towards speakers. I now will be running a, a script which is then examining the data that has been recorded. It takes a moment to run. This is the result that we got. The vertical axis shows decibels. For people familiar with speakers that should ring a bell but normally this is not so well known. What this means is that it is a logarithmic scale. Zero means that's our baseline. Plus 20 means it is 10 times of that baseline and minus 20 means it is one tenth of that baseline. On the horizontal axis you can see frequency. We are sweeping from 20 hertz to about 250 hertz. And when you look at the result you can see that the frequency response is almost perfectly flat all the way to 250 hertz. It is slightly going down at the end at high frequency and I have drawn a dotted line which is indicating minus 2 dB. That means we are staying in a range of plus minus 1 dB of the nominal value that's determining the accuracy of the playback or the neutrality or the linearity whatever you call it and plus minus 1 dB means an error of plus minus 10 percent which is more common sense and to put this into perspective of simulators we can pick a set of Corsa that is one of the fastest simulators in terms of how fast it is updating the force feedback towards the wheelbase running at 400 hertz and if you do this you can create an output signal of 200 hertz like you need an alternation like two points to make something and this is here 200 hertz and you can see that the wheelbase can accurately replay this, which means that it is faster than all the simulators out there at the moment in the market. And I will now repeat the same measurement and show you what happens if you reduce the slew rate of the wheelbase, starting the test tool. Again, listen to the increasing tone. You can notice that the tone is softer, it's more dampened, it's more silent, it's not as loud. That is because the wheelbase is not as agile anymore, no? Because we told it to not to be. Running the script again to visualize the result. And what you can see here is it is again flat. There's a small bump. And here you can see that it starts declining. We call this bandwidth limit. That's the limit of frequency to which it can play back its input signal. And typically what is specified in audio gear is the minus 3 dB point. That's the point of half the output level as what it's intended. And it is about here. So we can say it is about 170 hertz that this wheelbase is now limited to. That means, again referring to a SETA cursor, the high frequency content of, for example, road texture, which is creating a very high frequency content, will now be attenuated. It will not be played back neutrally. We have now shown you how the slew rate affects the frequency response of the device. And we said in another video that we recommend to keep this setting at the highest possible level and to use the smoothing filters instead. I'm now about to show you what this looks like. I will start by selecting optimal and run another test. Let's look at the results. I have added a green dotted line here which is a minus 3 dB point and that's industry standard to specify the limit for a frequency response. And you can see it is crossing the curve at about 130 hertz. And I have to say that the simulation is now adapting to iRacing 360 behavior, like sending data at 360 hertz. We have just shown you how you can dial down high frequency effects like curbs using the smoothing filters. What you can also see from this graph is that it stays flat in the low frequency range, which means smoothing filters do not alter your connection to the wheels and therefore also not your competitiveness in the racing game. If you are still watching, then you have to be very passionate either about sim racing or the loudspeakers. And to appreciate that, we want to make a little raffle. We want to give away this particular DFP15 to one of you. It's gonna be signed on the back by me and Frank, and it's gonna be a very special unit. Yes, it is a little bit scratched by our testing, but drives as new, 
You just saw it. So, to participate, you need to follow VRS Instagram account, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and leave a comment under this video. If we manage to make this video viral together, then maybe other manufacturers will listen and copy what we just did. Then together we can demystify what other people mean when they say that the force feedback feels great. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Bye. Bye.